Well, I, I think everybody is informed about uh, the Katsanos analysis and of course this is influencing in an important way our uh, treatment options. The more specifically in Belgium we have the federal agency recommendation stating that uh, you don't use paclitaxeli looting devices anymore, period. They don't mention anything about high risk atrestenosis and so on. So of course with a recommendation like this from a federal agency uh, you are quite limited in your options for treatment. Yes, so based on the previous statement, as we cannot use that much drug eluting technology anymore in Belgium, so I changed my treatment algorithm. And this new treatment algorithm is actually based on three questions. First of all, is the lesion severely calcified? Second, is the patient at high risk for restenosis? And third, is it a good angioplasty responder, yes or no? So based on these three questions, I make an algorithm, a treatment algorithm, stating that if the lesion is extremely calcified and the lesion is a, a good responder to an angioplasty or another prepping uh, mechanism, so then I choose for an interwoven stent, the Supera of Abbott, um, it, we have the data over there, the data in the superb trial in the Supera 500 and Supera 500 LL registries are perfect. So one condition, you need to prepare your vessel in the perfect way before you implant the device. So this is an ultimate indication for interwoven stents. On the other side, when the lesion is not very calcified, the patient is not at high risk for restenosis and is uh, easily responding to vessel prep, a modern generation of uh, bare metal stent with the right chronic output force seems for me a good option too. So indeed, in my opinion there are still, and I'm following there a little bit the FDA recommendations in the third and last letter that they published, so there are indications uh, for this drug eluting technology and I'm thinking on the patients at high risk for restenosis. These are patient-based factors, diabetic patients and state renal disease female patients. On the other hand, they are also lesion-specific high-risk factors. I'm thinking on long lesions, I'm thinking on occlusions and so on. So based on this, in this category of patients, I'm still using drug eluting technology. Is it an angioplasty responding lesion? I go for DCB based on all the trials we have available. If it is an angioplasty non-responder, I need a scaffold and I opt for a drug eluting stent. So I think there are two important ways of optimizing our therapy nowadays. The first of all is for me to have the perfect pre-procedural imaging. So I perform in the majority of my patients a CT angiography to judge the state of the vessels, the degree of calcification, the debris into the lumen of the vessel, so in this way we can plan our procedure in a better way and this is uh, quite often optimizing the final result. As important is during the procedure of course is prepping the vessel, so independently of the technology I'm using, bare metal stand, drug coat, balloon, drug eluting stand or whatever, I spend a lot of time, much more attention to my vessel prep as I did in earlier days. So, Imaging and vessel prep is, in my opinion, the key for success.